Hi, this is Craig Shoemaker, and in this video, I'll demonstrate to you how the Ignite UI IG Grid behaves on mobile devices like the iPad, as well as it does on desktop browsers. Here in the desktop browser, I've got a grid that has a number of different features enabled in the grid. There's sorting, which you can do multiple sorts, column hiding, again, do multiples of column hiding, uh, selection with row selectors, tool tips, paging, and grouping. So there's a lot going on in this grid, and I'd like to show you some of the accommodations that are made within the grid when you're dealing with a desktop environment versus a touch environment. So the first thing that I want to do is come over to price, and I'll sort that. And so it's sorting well, but I also would like to sort again so it's descending. So I did that by clicking on the column header, but I can also come in here, choose the sort on multiple. I can click on price again, so now it's descending. And I could even choose other items to sort by. I just want to use price right now, so I'll leave it at that. But this is the dialog that you would use for sorting by multiple columns. Next, there's a few different ways that you can hide a column. So the first thing I'll do here for ID is click on the little gear icon and choose hide. So now the ID column is hidden. But I also might want to hide category as well. So instead of going directly to hide, I can come into column chooser, and you can see from here, I can show and hide the columns that I wish. So now with ID and category gone, it seems like it would make a lot of sense to group by category. So from here, I can either take a column header and drag it into the group area, or what I can do is click on select columns, and I've already hidden category, but I wanna go ahead and group by that. And now I have a nice grouping here that shows you each category, and each of the items underneath. Now that I've grouped some items, I can do some selections. So if I select each one of these, and then even page off of the current page, go all the way down to the bottom, and back up again, you can see that those, those selections persist. There's even a select all checkbox here up at the top. And again, the same thing works as I page through the grid. Lastly, you'll see that there's some tooltips showing up. If I hover over each one of the cells, I get a tooltip of its value. And this is one of the features that behaves a little bit differently on mobile devices. When I show you on the iPad, I'll be tapping in order to show the tooltip appear. So let's take a look at what this same scenario might look like on the iPad. So here now is the same grid on the iPad. Now, the first thing that you might notice is the fact that there's a few more elements on the screen than there were on the desktop browser. When I get into the code, I'll show you it. But what I've done is use Modernizer in order to detect whether or not touch events are available in the browser. And since touch events are available within Safari on the iPad, then those elements are rendered out to the page. So just like I did before, I'll begin by sorting on the price column by pressing on the column header. Now I can continue to do it that way, but also if I press on the sort columns button up in the top left hand corner, you'll see that the sort multiple dialog appears again. And from here, I can change this to a descending sort, or I can sort by multiple items and kind of go on from there. All I really want to do is sort by price at this time, so I'll just leave it at that. Next, I'll hide the ID column by tapping on the gear and then choosing hide. Or I can press on the hide columns button, which brings up the column chooser. And another option I also have available is to click on the gear icon next to category and choose column chooser from there. And from here, I can show and hide different columns as I'd see fit. For right now, I'll go ahead and hide ID and category. Now, on a mobile device, I can't just drag a column header into the group by area in order to do a grouping. So from here, I can tap on select columns, and then I can choose by which items I want to group by. In this case, it makes the most sense to group them by category. And obviously, I can do multiple groupings as well. I can delete the groupings, but right now I'll just group by category and we'll end up with a grid pretty much like what was on the desktop. Now I can select rows by tapping on the checkboxes in the row. I can even page through the grid and you'll see that again, the selections remain. I can tap on the checkbox at the top and select everything within that current pages view. Now finally with the tooltips, as I tap on an item, you can see that that tooltip shows up. If I tap on another item, the original tooltip that I brought up uh, disappeared and then went away. 
But if I want to get rid of a single tooltip, I can just tap on the X in the top right hand corner. So that's the IG grid working in both desktop and mobile environments. So now let me take you through the code and you can see how it's all done. Okay, the code for this page is really straightforward. And there's really only one accommodation that you need to make for mobile devices. So starting from the top, I'm bringing in Modernizer, jQuery, jQuery UI, and the Infragistics Loader. I'll skip the style rules here for a moment and come back to that. Here's all the markup that's required for this page. I bring in a few buttons, and then I have a table that acts as a container for the grid itself. Now the buttons are only going to be displayed on mobile devices, and I'm using Modernizer in order to detect whether or not touch events are available within the browser. And that's the detection mechanism to figure out whether or not I'm going to show it on the desktop or show it on a mobile browser. Initially, I hide it from everything. And that's what I do with this class of none. Now, there's a distinction here that's important. And that's why I'm using the important flag. And that is these buttons are instantiated as Ignite UI buttons. And so when I do that, it takes the, the button element and makes it a container for a few other elements and also the control applies a number of different styles to it within the style sheet. Now those styles are applied down in the script when I instantiate this button, so I can't just put a regular display none and expect it to work correctly. I need to tell it important because rules for cascading style sheets are applied in a cascading fashion where they go from the general down to the specific. So I want to make sure to override anything that's later applied to tell it to be display block or whatever it is. So that's why I'm using exclamation important in this class name. So there's the two buttons that show for sorting and hiding on the mobile devices. And then I have the grid container. The data is being brought in through a reference to a JavaScript file, which is basically just the products table of Northwind in a JSON format. To configure the script loader, I set a path for the script path as well as the CSS path. And this demo uses a number of the different features of the grid. So I'm explicitly stating which one I want here. So we've got sorting, hiding, selection, row selectors, tooltips, paging, and group by. Now something you want to be aware of is that when you're delimiting each one of these features of the grid, you have to put a comma between each one. Make sure you don't put a space after that comma or else you'll get an error. So it's just a little quick tip there. So then there's a function that runs after the loader is done loading in all of the different resources. So from here, I'm instantiating the Ignite UI grid and then setting up the columns explicitly here. Then I'm setting the data source equal to products, which is defined in that script file that I'm referencing up above. And then I'm defining each of the features that were loaded in. So I have sorting and hiding, selection, which is uh, necessary in order to have row selectors, tooltips, paging, and group by. And the final consideration is just to set up the buttons and only show them if I'm working with a mobile device. Now I created this function for closed modals so that if you were to press on the button for sorting and then the button for column hiding right after each other, the previous one would close first. So this basically just makes sure that the UI is in sync with whatever the user is doing. So closed modals will just hide the column chooser and close the sorting dialog. And then there's the click event handler set up for each one of the buttons that closes all the modals and then just opens the one that is uh, appropriate for the button that's been clicked. And then finally, take a look at modernizer.touch. If that returns true, then I remove the none class from the elements and they show up only on mobile devices. Thanks for joining me through this video of showing you how to use the Ignite UI grid in desktop and mobile environments. If you have any questions or want to connect through Twitter, my email address is cshoemaker at infragistics.com and you can catch me on Twitter where I'm at Craig Shoemaker.